The only time that I was this nervous was when I um, was asking a man out for a date <laughs> at the gym. <laughs> that's, that's what comes the closest. Well, I guess we just had to send it. Oh, dear Lord. Yeah, that was me, sending up $7,000 camera into the air on an FPV drone. And this is the story of how it all happened. It all started in 2021. I had just bought the DJI FPV drone to see what all the fuss was about. Being an experienced drone operator, I thought that flying a first-person view drone wouldn't be that much of a difference from flying a regular drone. Controller, a pair of propellers, B pair of propellers, chargers, cables. Absolutely no clue what it is, but it looks cool. Just gonna take a picture of this, share with the world, huh? It's finally getting into FPV. Post! <laughs> See what people have to say about this. Don't fly an FPV drone in manual mode inside without practicing in a simulator first. Huh. Let's just say that I should have listened to the people send me DMs. Oh, we're all good. Just just getting uh, getting into the habit of flying FPV. No joke, it's actually broken. That was a $1,300 monitor. Hmm. I guess you can say that I get kind of scared because almost an entire year passed by without me even touching an FPV drone. But then, one day in June... <sighs> what is this? Hi, Peter. Would you like to try out a new FPV drone? Best regards, DJI. I was wondering if I should accept the offer or decline and say that FPV is not my kind of thing. But then I started to think to myself, what if I do this right? What if I start from the beginning, learn the basics, and then work my way up? It might just work. After a little bit of consideration, I replied to the email and said, let's go. So at this point, I kind of realized that if I want to make this video good enough and be able to fly in manual mode, I need to practice. Oh shit. Since I was on vacation with the family, things went kind of slow. So after spending a couple of days outside in the blazing hot sun, I decided that, you know what, I gotta have a break right now, and uh, what better thing to do than try to find a simulator that I could use. I was reading up online on the different simulators that was possible to get, and this was apparently one of the best ones. It's called Liftoff. So let's boot this bad boy up then. Liftoff is a simulator that is gonna cost you around $20, and you're gonna be able to find it on Steam. Works for both Mac and Windows, so you don't have to think about what kind of system that you're running. It took me far too long to understand that you need to have a dongle between the controller and your computer with a USB-C to USB-A cable in order to make it work, otherwise it's not going to be able to find connection. So after crashing multiple times in simulator, I finally got it to fly steady. Well, maybe not steady, but at least up in the air. If you haven't seen my review of the DJI Vata, I'm going to drop a link in the description and at the end of this video, but I highly recommend to watch this video till the very end first. Oh, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, that'd be highly appreciated. See, when I first started to fly the DJI Vata, I had absolutely zero interest in flying a real FPV drone. Mainly because I just wanted things to work. I didn't want to build my own drone and I didn't want any sort of hassle. I just wanted to fly. A couple of months went by and the more that I flew the Vata, the more I started to feel like it was a little bit limited as to what I wanted to have in an FPV drone. Therefore, I have ordered this. Oh, you know something that I can't stand? Velvet. I I don't know why. A new controller. I like it. Feels good. Antenna. Adjustable. Couple of buttons. Ooh. Take a look at this. 
the Gep RC Mark V. All the videos that I watched on this drone said that it was an easy to fly drone, it's a bind and fly, and you have the DJI O3 Air unit, which is the same kind of camera as you got on the DJI Avata. So it's gonna feel familiar to fly. But taking a step into kind of custom FPV drones from the DJI Vata means that you gotta spend a whole lot of more money. Not only did I have to buy a new controller and a new drone, but I also had to spend some money on some new batteries, a new charger, and also a GoPro to put on top of the actual drone. I think that all in all, I spent like $1,900 on that setup alone. And that is not even including the DJI FPV goggles. Another big difference that happens when you go from DJI drones to the custom built ones is that you have to connect your drone into a software that was entirely new to me that is called Betaflight. Betaflight is basically a software that allows you to control all the different parameters of your drone and your remote, but we're gonna dive into that a little bit later. Since this was the first time I was going to fly a real FPV drone, I didn't really know what to expect. And one thing that I highly recommend you do before you even start the drone is to make sure that you have the propeller set in the right direction. Are we ready? We're ready. We're just gonna hit record. Got okay. it. Okay. Oh my gosh. You didn't lift? <laughs> I'm so scared there. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. Propellers, are they the wrong way? Oh no. After correcting my mistake, the first flight was a success. One of the scariest part about flying custom FPV drones is that you don't have the same kind of fail safes as you do with the DJI drones. Sure, some of the more expensive ones does have like a built-in GPS that you can activate in beta flight and so on and so forth, but the majority of the five inch drones, once you lose connection, they're gonna be gone. So you gotta be prepared for that when you're take, taking a step in to actually flying custom FPV drones. But a couple of days after I posted the video from that trip, which I'm also gonna link in the description down below, I got an email from a guy that was called David Gu. David is an FPV drone pilot with over 11 years of experience within the FPV world. And he was not amused by my choice of drone. The email contained basically a wall of text saying that, hey Peter, I love your stuff, you know, but seeing you go for the Gep RC, I don't know what to think about that. It's not the drone that I would recommend as an experienced drone pilot. I'm a little bit disappointed to see you talk about this drone. My interest was piqued because 11 years of experience within the FPV world, I need to know more. So please do share your thoughts on what drone that is actually a good drone to fly. So David sent me a link to one of the drones that he said was one of the best five inch bind and fly drones that I could purchase. And uh, said and done, I placed an order and awaited its arrival to my studio. And since I was very intrigued about all the experience that David has, I kept the email conversation going a little bit back and forth. And then I eventually said to him, so, do you build your own drones? And he said like, yeah. And that is where I felt like I was kind of standing at a crossroad. I could either take route one and say, okay, cool, thank you for all the tips. Bye-bye, see you later. Or route two, go all in. So I asked David to build me a scene lifter. All right, I'm super excited. I'm about to do a build video of this X8 from FPV Frame. I'm excited, got goosebumps. Got cameras, everything set up, so let's go. So now that the Cinelifter was getting built and David was fired up, I started to think to myself, is a five inch drone actually gonna be enough to practice with before the Cinelifter arrives? And since I was already kind of deep into the FPV rabbit hole, I thought to myself, well, maybe I should order another five inch drone to see how that performs compared to the FRC, but also a seven inch drone. And that is where I ordered the iFlight Nazgul Evoke together with the iFlight Chimera 7-inch version 2. So this is the part of the video where things are gonna get even more nerdy than it already has been.
let's start with the five inch. It is a very responsive and extremely lightweight. Almost doesn't have any weight. When you push the throttle, it's like boof, exploding up into the air. Meanwhile, the seven inch on the other hand feels like it's a lot more, I don't know, it's responding to your movements in a different way. I do think that seven inch felt a little bit more comfortable to fly. It's definitely gonna be one of those drones that you want to do sort of like cliff diving and smooth like following shots. You can do that with the five inch as well, but testing it out now, I did feel a little bit of a difference. And when it comes to flying fast, the five inch is the way to go. When it comes to battery life though, the seven inch is definitely the way to go. I think you're gonna get like five minutes, six minutes with that. Meanwhile, with the five inch, it's like, three, four minutes tops. Just to give you a little bit of clarification when it comes to battery life, this battery was strapped onto the five inch, which is a 1550 milliamp battery. And when I was flying seven inch, I used this battery, which is 3300 milliamp battery. Both batteries are six cells, which means that you're gonna be able to get a lot of power. The downside though, is that you can't strap the bigger battery onto the FRC. In that case, you're not gonna be able to have the GoPro. You could push it back like that, but then you're gonna cover the antenna. And looking at the NASCO Evoque, you're gonna run into the same issue. You're not gonna be able to have the battery strapped on there with the GoPro at a specific angle. On the seven inch though, you're gonna be able to have a bigger battery than this strapped to this drone, which is also gonna give you a lot longer flight time. And since you have bigger props on this, you also have more thrust than what you have on the Nazca Evoque or the Gep RC. I finished Peter's build. I've given it a maiden at the office. So we'll plug that right in. It looks like it's good. All right, so I take a step back, hide behind the ears, arm it, it arms. I'm gonna yaw it a bit. Sounds good, let's take off. It flies great. Now I'm gonna fly it here and just feel it out. So what I've got is the trusted GoPro 6 that I'm using an ND4 on and auto shutter because I want the shutter to go up high when I'm above these tree lines. Why? Because there's a lot of light and if there's a lot of light, you get a lot of shutter speed. The higher the shutter speed, you're gonna see all the vibrations that are in the drone. There shouldn't be any. I'm going to hover test it. So that means I'm gonna take off, just hover it, see that everything works good. Usually when I do this, on a smaller drone, I'll put my foot out so it doesn't hit me. On this one, I'll just move away from it. Smooth landing. Felt really good, uh, Peter. I think you've got yourself a really nice machine. Oi, 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 oi. It has finally arrived. Prime Gear logo. This is actually way smaller than I thought it would be. I was expecting something interesting. So we just got the uh, controller bound. Everything should work properly. Props are on. I'm a little bit nervous. This is going to be the first time arming the Cine lifter. <laughs> oh, yeah. First time sending up a single lifter into there, crashing it straight into the ground. That's that's the thing, you know, with FPV. For those of you that are watching and think like, oh, holy shit, Peter, you just crashed it. Well, yes, I did, but it's gonna happen. Like flying FPV, it's inevitable. Could you imagine if I had put the FX6 onto this, like immediately? We'd be uh, one camera down, for sure. Just gonna replace the props and make sure that we get everything up and running again, and then we're gonna do another test flight. Super eager to see how this flies with the goggles on. We're going for the grass patch this time around so that we don't break anything on the first go. <laughs> Oh, ho, ho, ho. 
This flies like a freaking airplane. Comparing the Sin Lifter to a 5 inch drone is almost impossible because the Sin Lifter is just such a beast in and by itself, but I'm incredibly glad that I didn't crash it the second time around. I did not feel comfortable enough to put the FX6 onto the Sin Lifter and bring it with me for the shoot when we were about to shoot the Ram up north. So instead, I brought the 7 inch together with my iFly Nascol. We wanted to have sort of like a tracking shot behind the car but we also encountered heavy snowfall. So I sent up the Nazgul to do a sort of like a test flight to see how it felt, and the drone felt incredibly fast. And when it comes to FPV drones, one of the things that you gotta consider is how steep of an angle you got on the camera, because the steeper the angle, the more thrust you're gonna have pushing your drone forward. And that is something that you gotta set before you get to location and before you start the actual shoot. And David gave me a really good tip when it came to the angle of the camera. He said, the faster you can fly with the lower the angle, the better the pilot you're going to be. In this case, I was not a good pilot because I sent up the drone, tried to track the car, didn't work, and then I swung back around and then sent off the drone, like, gone. No idea where I crashed. No footage, no beeper. You learn from your mistakes. Highly recommend you set a beeper in beta flight on all your drones. Still have the telemetry connected with the Crossfire remote. And uh, my GoPro and my iFlight Nascol is currently somewhere out here in the wasteland. Basically what happened was that I was flying and then all of a sudden it started to spin like super fast. I flipped it into angle mode and just started to spin it even more. Sent up the Mavic, tried to see if we can find some traces, but it all just looks the same. There's just branches and stuff. Whoever finds it, you can keep the drone. Just send me the camera, or at least the memory card. That's $1,200 gone. Since the only drone that I had left was the seven inch, I was putting a very heavy faith on that drone being able to work the way that I wanted to. But before I sent it up to actually capture some shots off the RAM, I made sure that I connected it to beta flight, made sure that I had the beeper turned on. I also turned down the actual FPV camera so that I would be able to follow the car without going too fast. And after that, I got a really cool shot. Flying the 7 inch drone was definitely something that felt a lot more reliable because it was a lot more sturdy in the air, especially when you're flying behind the car and you have this wind gust coming from the car and the aerodynamics and all that stuff. And as I got back from the trip to the studio, I had a couple of friends coming over from uh, the UK and the United States. Cal Watts? Nope. Should definitely be an electrician. I said it before, I can <laughs> say it again. And uh, we got Curtis. Or how do you say it, how do you say it in Britain? Curtis. 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 This is all I could. How you doing? I'm gonna drop a link to both of these channels in the description. And I wanted to show them one of the golden spots in Gothenburg, which is out in the archipelago. And I thought, why not bring my 7 inch drone and capture some good, like, cruising shots among the cliffs? What I did not think of was that I had set up my controller differently because of the Cine Lifter before I went outside. Let's record here as well. Off we go. That's not good. Oh. Fuck! Ah. <laughs> oh, I see it! I see it! Back. Yeah, get the tripod! Let's see your chin! Here you go! Woo. <laughs> I didn't lose a GoPro. Yeah. Grab some banger shots while you're here. This frame is still live, so I can still use the frame, but all the cables and everything else is probably fried. It just seemed like it suddenly just stalled and stopped too. <laughs> yeah, and I think it has to do with the setting that I set up for the Cine Lifter. So basically what happened was that once I sent it up, I disarmed it. So it's like the motors were on and then I disarmed it. I was like, Ooh. 
two GoPros, two <laughs> drones in less than a week. But that's the realities of FPV drones now, you know? It is. When you have a controller like this, you can set up all the different rockers and switches to be the way that you want them to be. So if you go into modes, then you're gonna have this table here. And as you can see here, we have arm, we have angle mode, and then you have beeper and GPS rescue. So when I'm flicking this switch, you can see up here that you have sort of like yellow dot moving back and forth. And something that I missed that I had set up was that when I flicked this rocker, I had it set to disarm because I hadn't made sure that all of these rockers were the same on all my drones. So when I flicked that, boom, drone was gone. I just got the drone from fpvframes.ch. This is apparently one of the best drones that you can get in the 5-inch series, according to David. So I'm trusting you, David. And uh, the guy said FPV frame. Cannot understand why you did not put a USB-C in there. This is micro USB. Come on, it's 2023. But one of the things that is very important when you're getting a drone like this, basically when you're moving your throttle, you want the drone to go up, right? Looking here, you can see that you have a channel map that says AETR. And that basically means that roll is on A, pitch on E, and yaw on R, throttle on T. So we gotta make sure the channel map is according to this. If we were to type in AERT, you can see that the drone starts spinning, right? So basically what happens is that when I move my throttle down, it just spins because we put the throttle on the yaw. And that is something that we can't do. And as you can see here, now we're gonna change out the R against the T. And that means that we're gonna have A-E-T-R instead of A-E-R-T. So always make sure to check this on your drone because otherwise if you just bind and fly, then might be bye-bye. Learning how to use Betaflight is definitely a challenge because it's not one of the most intuitive programs out there. It's, it's, it's a strange program. It takes a lot of time and I, I definitely recommend you to spend time to actually learn how the different things work when you are buying your first custom drone. Because it doesn't matter if you buy a bind and fly drone or if you build a drone on your own, you still need to learn the program because all of these drones are kind of like based on beta flight. Today is gonna be day three of practicing with Sinlifter. So I put on some weights here so that we can Im imitate the camera actually being there. So this is approximately one and a half kilos that we're gonna try to fly. I hope that we're not gonna crash today like we did with the seven inch. I got some good faith. You can definitely feel that it's a heavy drone with a heavy setup, but I do think that the weights are helping a whole lot because you feel that you have the weight and you don't wanna push it. And since I'm not going to fly acro mode, I'm not trying to do loops or twists and turns because when I attach my FX6 onto this, it's gonna be, it's gonna be for real. Still don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> can highly recommend this controller. This is the TBS Tango 2. Some incredible precise control when you're flying with your drone. Since I was hanging out a few more days together with Kyle and Curtis, I told them that we should go back to the same spot, fly another FPV, but this time I'm gonna make sure that I have set up everything correctly in beta flight and with my remote so that I'm not gonna crash. Since the flight was successful, I felt a little bit more comfortable with the different settings that I had set up for my Tango 2 in my different drones. So I made sure that all of them were set up in the exact same way. Because once you start learning the muscle memory, 
it's very easy to press the wrong button. So don't set up one drone differently from another drone. Just make sure that you have everything the same on all your drones. Rates, different switches, fail safe, you name it. This is gonna be the first test flight with the drone that I bought from FPV Frames. And just wanna get it out there, none of this that I bought for this video is sponsored. I paid for everything myself and this is my honest opinion. Just so you know. Something that is very important that I've understood with FPV is that it comes down to the rates that you're using more so than the actual drone. Of course the drone matters, but if your rates are wrong, you're not gonna be able to fly cinematic. That's kind of what I figure out. Nice. That felt very good. So do you remember the crash with the sin lifter? Well, that resulted in sort of like small vibrations of the entire drone. This happened small cosmetical damage i thought but this can apparently be more than enough to cause the micro vibrations that i'm seeing Got the motor switched out. I'm doing a couple of test flights with the new motor and a few batteries, just to make sure that nothing is wrong. I've actually added a sort of like a shock absorbing rubber plate between the camera mount and the actual drone. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this performs. So we have a 50% chance of crashing and a 50% chance of making it back. You yeah. ready to go? I am. I got it back, even on the plate. You see that? Oh, Yo, that was sick. My heart was racing incredibly much. <laughs> it still is. <laughs> so this entire video started with me getting a very stupid idea, as per usual, of sending an FXX up on an FPV drone. And the challenge in this was to see if I would actually be able to make it. And I could. So, would I recommend you to do it? Absolutely not. Do not ever try to do that unless you have the budget and possibility to actually lose a camera that is gonna cost you around $10,000 because it's an incredibly expensive camera. It's an incredibly expensive drone. I paid David $3,600 for that drone alone. So the entire setup that I've been flying is well above 10K. And honestly, as a YouTuber and a content creator, you're probably gonna be better off flying a GoPro instead of an FX6. And during the course of this journey, I've ordered a bunch of these different drones Drones, mainly because I wanted to finish this video. I wanted to go all in and make sure that you got the video that I wanted to make from the beginning. And to give you my honest opinion of FPV, I'm gonna say that it's not gonna be for everyone. It's gonna be a very expensive hobby. Like you're gonna have to spend a lot of money on different drones, on spare parts, on new engines, different controllers, on new GoPro, on new batteries, because something happens, there is going to be a lot of money involved. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen to you, but I'm saying, Prepare for the worst, hope for the best. And if you are anything like me and you don't have sort of like the interest of building your own drone, then there is very skillful people out there that are building some really good drones. And the drone that I ordered from FPV Frames is actually run by a guy that is very good at building these specific drones. So after flying both the iFlight Nazgul and the Flow X2, I think it's called, together with the FRC, I'm going to have to say that this drone is probably the best that I've flown so far. And the good thing about this drone compared to the iFlight Nazgul is that you're gonna be able to have a way easier time being able to find the spare parts for this drone as compared to this. So depending on where you're at with your FPV journey, I think that what I would recommend you to do is to practice in simulator 
a whole lot, as much as you can do, and try to play around with the different rates. If you want to see the rates that I'm currently using on my drones, there's going to be a link in the description. Head over to David's channel because he's probably going to do way more videos than me that is covering more in depth. But if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to see more of FPV, do drop a comment down below because I would gladly like to cover all these drones in separate videos. This video was a pain in the ass to put together. Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you. And um, until next time, Peter from Sweden saying goodbye.